Hi, I'm Gary Bowden, and welcome to another Zara TV tutorial at ZaraZone.com. At ZaraZone.com. This month, we're going to take a look at lighting. How you can add photorealistic elements to your composition through the use of highlights and shadows. First, go to ZaraZone.com forward slash tutorials and download the zip file that contains this month's examples. Unpack them and get them ready for the steps to follow. So I tell you what, this month I'm going to take you through a couple tutorials that I think you will find very illuminating. I wonder what this button does. Oh wow. <laughs> oh Luke, Obi-Wan! Rule number one when you want to draw something that's photorealistic is any object that is illuminated that has a surface underneath it is going to cast a shadow. And with shiny objects you can see a highlight that indicates the light source. Even when you're drawing dull objects, such as politicians, you're going to have a light area and a darker area. In addition from left to right, you can also set up a scene that suggests lighting from front to back or back to front. You have three axes of illumination and all the degrees in between when you want to draw something that has lighting. The first example I'll ask you to draw this month are three stacked cubes. You'll use the extrude tool, so open a new document in Zara. Take the rectangular tool. Let's draw a background first and I'll show you why. Color it something like red. Let's make it a little bigger here. Now hold shift and I want you to create a square and give it sort of a green color. Uh, holding shift constrains it to a square shape instead of rectangular. Now what I want you to do is to take the 3D extrude tool and drag on the face. This rotates and sets an extrusion. Now click and drag the back lip to the right to increase the depth. On the info bar, click on the lighting icon to reveal the light sources in this scene, then click on the color editor. Now in the list, I want you to scroll up and find light color number two, and I want you to make that black. I also want you to take light color number three and make it black. Now we're dealing with only one source of light in the scene. We're going to be dealing with one light in the scene. Get it casting left and into the scene. Then with the selector tool, drag and drop a copy of the cube. Now notice there's a little bit of perspective. That's what the yellow lines were for. Press Control shift b to put it behind the first. Double click on the extrude edge and that'll bring up the extrusion handles. And what you can see here is that I've more or less matched the perspective and I want you to do that. When the bottom edge lines up, you're good. Then I want you to drag and drop another copy. Double click the side to bring up the extrusion features. Rotate it a little bit until it's lined up with the second one. Shrink it a little bit because in perspective objects get smaller. Once you have the three cubes, let's make the composition more interesting. Double click the middle one and choose angle two and drag it around. As you can see, the lighting changes in the middle one. Angle two is the Y axis. Do the same with the bottom cube and you now have a more visually interesting composition, but all the lighting is still from the upper left. So now we're going to draw the shadow for this. It's going to be a cast shadow. Take the uh, shape tool and click points while you're in line mode and cusp connection. And uh, you'll be surprised that you can create a cast shadow merely by accurately drawing the silhouette. We close it top. Let's make this color black. And then with the selector tool, take the top handle, drag down, click it a second time to put it in skew and rotate mode and then press control shift B to put it behind the cubes and you need to do a little bit of editing to line up the uh, bottom edge but basically this looks like a pretty good shadow let's enhance it with the transparency tool dragging upward let's make this a little darker and let's make the beginning point a little bit lighter and just about in no time with the help of um, these steps and the extrude tool, what you have is a pretty neat composition. Notice again that the lighting casts down and right into the scene and the shadow is in the opposite direction. Now I'm going to add a couple little extra pieces and this is mostly guesswork. We would think that from the left the right hand side is going to cast a little bit of a shadow so I've created this triangular shape to make the uh, second cube a little bit darker as though the top cube is casting upon it. 
and then create a second triangle down here, revealing part of the top edge of the bottom cube. And again, with the transparency tool, we'll make this a little less than 100% opaque. And that's a pretty neat illustration that is lit accurately with highlights and shadows. Let's move on now to a round shape. I'm going to show you how to draw this pumpkin. It may not breathe like this one, but uh, take the quick shape tool, set it to star and eight sides, and then with the extrude tool, extrude it a little. And by default, the edge type is rounded. Now, you'll see that it only goes up to about 250 there on the slider. However, you can type up to 999, and that's the secret to getting this uh, shape looking more pumpkinish and less like an extrude. Now, we have three light sources, again, as we do with all extruded shapes, the, uh, the white, the slightly blue, and the slightly green. Now, with the rectangle tool, create a rectangle and put it behind the pumpkin. Control shift b to put it behind, and the reason why we've got a green background now is because, first of all, let's put this blue arrow behind the pumpkin. We only want two sources of lighting here. I'm going to show you main and catch lighting. Now, this secondary light that's green right now, I'd like you to uh, choose it with the color editor and pick kind of a uh, warm yellowish glow. And again, the, the reason why I asked you to put the background behind that is also because this arrow is going to disappear against the white background unless you have something to uh, contrast against it. So let's main light this pumpkin from the upper left going into the scene. And the uh, catch light, uh, a secondary light source at the bottom right, helps make this object look more round. Next we pick the shadow tool and let's choose the floor shadow type and increase the intensity a little bit and feather it somewhat and that's fairly good looking it's not completely accurate but the shadow tool removes a lot of manual work that you might have to do otherwise now I'm gonna take the shape tool and rough out a stem to the pumpkin and you may want to do this too and as long as you have the shape tool what you can do is you can drag on a line segment and curve it as I've done here I'm just going to finesse this. This is not great art, but it'll get us to where we want to go design-wise. Now, if you're illuminating from the left, as these highlights suggest, what you want to do is you want to illuminate the stem from the left. Now, a good quick way to do this is to click on green, click on the uh, fill tool, and then drag a linear gradient from left to right. It's going to be darker green on the right, lighter green on the left. Use the color editor as you're clicking on the control handles for the uh, linear gradient. And by default, uh, every new object has the same fill as the previous one you created. So once we have this, I'm going to ask you to draw an ellipse now to cap off the pumpkin. And as you can see, it's got the same fill, but the direction is the wrong way. Um, it, it should be denting in, and we're suggesting this through lighting. It'll be dark at the left, catching the light at the right. And that wasn't too hard to do. You can do this step also with uh, cylinders you might draw. It provides contrast and suggests a certain kind of reality. And I'm going to skew it a little bit. Next, what you want to do is draw a shadow of the stem casting down on the pumpkin. And I'm roughing this out a little bit here. Interestingly, it's more important that a shadow is in a picture than it is accurate. People don't really criticize inaccurate shadows, but they will criticize you if there isn't a shadow there. I've colored this with brown, use the transparency tool in stained glass mode, and adjust it a little bit, uniform transparency, so you can see a little bit of the pumpkin underneath. And what we have here now is a uh, fairly decent illustration of a pumpkin. Now I'm going to uh, call up the color editor and dim the catch light, this opposing light here, for a moment just to show you the importance of a secondary light source on a round object to help make it round. Now watch, I'm going to take this secondary light source, the light 2 color, and make it black. Now it still looks like a 3D image, but it's not nearly as visually interesting, nor is the pumpkin as round without that catch lighting. What I'm going to ask you to do is to take the um, ellipse tool, hold shift and drag yourself a circle and I'm going to show you how to apply the same catch lighting principle using circular gradient fill on this circle. Now I want you to take the light color at top 
a darker color at bottom and then double click on the gradient line to add a color stop there. Add brown to it if you're using orange like me and uh, let's add a third stop to that and bring it up around to the uh, highlight area and as you can see upper left and what you have is uh, some catch lighting on a circle that suggests a sphere and I hope you've had a ball with lighting this month.